Vegan, deleting bad karma. Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule. Nos programs offer plusieurs langues. Veuillez visiter suprememastertv.com barre oblique schedule. Nuestros programas ofrecen varios idiomas. Visite suprememastertv.com barre inclinada schedule. Ma karikar malo ande jesto nai aneka baasha lalo daiches chodandi suprememastertv chukka kam idru slash schedule. Afghanistan, Ancient Culture and Beautiful Heritage, Part 1 of 3. Continue watching to find out more. When introduced to someone in Afghanistan, you may reply warmly with Khusha Shodam as Mulagate Shuma, meaning pleased to meet you in Dari, one of the country's official languages, Amnoria. The peace-loving people of Afghanistan support your noble endeavors to protect living beings. May Allah grant you good fortune. With the recent turmoil in Afghanistan, the country has become the center of international attention and concern. As we stand with the Afghan people and pray for peace to prevail, in our three-part show, Afghanistan, Ancient Culture and Beautiful Heritage, we'll get to know the country and come to appreciate its rich cultural legacy, historical sites, art, music, dance, and many more wonders. Afghanistan is a landlocked country located at the crossroads of Central and South Asia, covering an area of 652,864 square kilometers with beautiful natural landscapes from vast plains to the majestic snow-capped Hindu Kush mountain range to secluded deserts and sapphire blue lakes. The land of the Afghans has flourished for centuries as a center of trade and culture. Afghanistan borders Pakistan to the east and south, China to the northeast, Iran to the west, and Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, and Tajikistan to the north. Afghanistan is also rich in natural resources such as copper, gold, oil, natural gas, uranium, and bauxite. Of the country's indigenous communities, approximately 42% of the population is Pashtun, 27% Tajik, 9% Hazara, and 9% Uzbek, with the remaining population made up of other ethnic groups. Approximately half of the citizens speak the Dari language and one-third speak Pashto, both of which are national languages. Minority groups also speak other languages such as Turic languages, Amek, Ashkun, and Baluchi. Afghanistan's currency is called the Afghani, the tulip is the national flower, and the Afghan pine the national tree. During the Mughal dynasty from 1526 to 1857, the country's capital and largest city, Kabul, was a serene metropolis full of mosques and gardens. Because of its strategically important location connecting the Middle East, India, and the Eurasian steppe, Afghanistan served as a central gateway on the ancient Silk Road, the famous trade route stretching from the Mediterranean Sea to China. Today, after many years of war, the once prosperous land awaits revitalization of its economy, culture, and political system. 
The earliest human traces in the region of Afghanistan go back at least 52,000 years. The earliest written record can be traced back to around 500 BC, the time of the Achaemenid Empire. Evidence in the land indicates that an advanced urbanized culture existed around 3000 to 2000 BC and the historic Bactria Kingdom dates back to 2500 BC. Many kingdoms have set up capitals in Afghanistan, so the country has integrated multiple religions and rich cultures such as the Indus Valley Civilization, the Achaemenid Empire, Macedonian culture under His Majesty Alexander the Great, the Greco-Bactrian Kingdom, the Kushan Empire, and the Indo-Sassanid Kingdom, among others. Throughout its long history, Afghanistan has been home to a variety of religions. Starting around 3000 BC, Zoroastrianism was the dominant religion in ancient Afghanistan. Even the modern Afghan solar calendar shows the names of the months that were influenced by Zoroastrianism. Buddhism and Hinduism flourished later during different dynasties, leaving major impacts on the land with their rich historical and cultural traditions. Islam was introduced into Afghanistan around 642 CE with the arrival of the Rashidun Arabs. Today, Afghanistan is an Islamic nation in which over 90% of the population follows Sunni Islam. About 10% are Shia Muslims and a small percent follow other religions such as Zoroastrianism, Sikhism, Buddhism, Jainism, and Hinduism. The country's long, brilliant history has produced one of the world's oldest, richest, and most diverse cultures. Afghanistan is famous for cherished historical sites including forts, minarets, castles, statues, and palaces, as well as ancient crafts and a variety of art forms. In August 2021, soon after the conflict took place in Afghanistan, UNESCO Director General the Honorable Audrey Azoulay called for the preservation of Afghanistan's cultural heritage in its diversity, in full respect of international law and for taking all necessary precautions to spare and protect its cultural heritage from damage and looting. UNESCO will also closely follow the situation on the ground, making every possible effort to secure the nation's invaluable cultural heritage. Precious viewers, we'll now pause for a moment to hear a brief message and return shortly. Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television. Vegan because we are smart enough to understand the bad consequences of a meat diet. Welcome back to our program. Now let's journey into Afghanistan's cherished cultural heritage. Important historical artifacts of Afghanistan are found in Herat, Mazari Sharif, Ghazni, Gandahar, and Firuze in Gore province, featuring various cultural styles such as those of the Hellenistic period, early Buddhism, the Timurid culture, the Islamic culture, and others. The citadel of Herat, located in the center of Herat in the fertile Hari River Valley, is also known as the Citadel of Alexander. The structure dates back to 330 BC when His Majesty Alexander the Great arrived with his Macedonian army and built it on top of the ruins of a fortress from the previous Achaemenid period. Over the next 2,000 years, the citadel of Alexander was used by many empires as a headquarters and experienced many periods of destruction and rebuilding.
between 1976 and 1979, the historic citadel was excavated and restored by UNESCO, and after experiencing decades of conflict, several international organizations decided to rebuild it. Afghanistan's National Museum is housed inside the citadel of Herat, and both are maintained by the Afghan Ministry of Information and Culture. In the historical trade center of Ghazni city, the Ghazni minarets, the only architectural remnants of the Bahram Shah Mosque and artifacts of the great Ghaznavid Empire, are two elaborately decorated towers built of fired mud bricks in the middle of the 12th century. The minarets are 20 meters tall and stand in the northeast of Ghazni city. The tower's surfaces are decorated with intricate geometric patterns and delicate terracotta tiles inscribed with Quranic verses. For purposes of preservation, the towers were equipped with sheet metal roofs in the 1960s. The Minaret of Jam, a UNESCO World Heritage Site, is located in a remote region of the Gore province in western Afghanistan. The Minaret of Jam was built of intricate baked bricks around the year 1190 as a monument of the Ghorid Empire. The minaret's surface is decorated with stucco and glazed tiles featuring many ancient cultural elements such as Kufik and Naski calligraphy, geometric patterns, and verses from the Quran representing the high architectural and artistic level of ancient Afghans. With a height of around 65 meters, it is the world's second highest freestanding minaret. Standing deep in the heart of the Kubaba Mountains at the confluence of the Hari and Jamrud rivers, the Minaret of Jam has experienced the ups and downs of Afghan history for nearly a thousand years. Facing problems of erosion and in need of preservation, the Minaret was listed as a World Heritage in Danger in 2002. UNESCO later provided two million U.S. dollars to repair the Minaret of Jam, and in 2020, the Islamic World Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, or ISESCO, listed the Minaret of Jam as a cultural heritage site of the Islamic world. The region of the second largest city of Afghanistan, Kandahar, is one of the oldest known human settlements on Earth. A major fortified ancient city existed at the site as early as about 1000 to 750 BC. Kandahar was an important outpost of the Achaemenid or Persian Empire during the 6th century BC. His Majesty Alexander the Great founded the city, gave it the ancient Greek name Alexandria of Arachosia, and built Old Kandahar around the 4th century BC. The Iconum city ruins and Hellenistic arts are aspects of precious cultural heritage from Alexandria of Arachosia. Because of its strategic location, Kandahar has been influenced by various cultures throughout history. Buddhism was first brought to Afghanistan by the Indian Emperor of the Maurya Dynasty, His Majesty Ashoka the Great, between 268 to 232 BC. A Buddhist bilingual inscription found on the rocky outcrop of Chiozina in Kandahar can be traced back to around 260 BC. The Islamic shrine Kirka Sharif houses a cloak that is believed to have been worn by the beloved Islamic prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, during his night journey in the year 621. These historical marvels reflect the rich culture, the high wisdom, and artistic level of the ancient land of Afghanistan, which will always nourish the spirit of later generations.
Elevated viewers, we appreciate your company today during Afghanistan Ancient Culture and Beautiful Heritage, Part 1 of 3. Please return next Wednesday, October 20th for Part 2. Up next is Shining World Compassion Award recipient Alam Orion, Vegan, Building Momentum Toward a Vegan World, right after Noteworthy News. We pray for humanity's complete transition to the compassionate, plant-based lifestyle, which will prevent future global disasters and ensure more fulfilling lives for everyone. I will have mercy and not sacrifice. Matthew, Holy Bible. Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule and suprememastertv.com forward slash CTAW.